JavaScript is a dynamically typed interpreted language famous for powering modern web apps. Its loosey-goosey nature and extensive built-in types and methods make it extremely easy to get a project off the ground quickly. If you're an existing programmer, buckle up because we're about to go blazingly fast. JavaScript was written to run in the browser, so you don't need to install anything special to get it working. Start by creating a JavaScript file with the .js extension. Then create a HTML file and add a script tag to the head that references your JavaScript file. Open the HTML file in your browser to see your code run. Alternative get started with server-side JavaScript by installing a JavaScript runtime like Node.js, Dino, or Bun. If you choose Node, I recommend downloading NVM, Node Version Manager, to manage your Node installations. Then, use your chosen tool to run your .js file. Most IDEs and text editors have JavaScript support built right in, so there's very little you need to do there. Define a variable using the let keyword, followed by the variable name, and equals, and the variable value. Use const to define a constant. JavaScript constants are constant pointers, so they can't be reassigned. However, if the value they hold as mutable, you may still be able to update it in place. Variables are dynamically typed, so types can change at runtime. JavaScript has seven primitive types, string, number, begint, boolean, symbol, null, and undefined. Strings are UTF-16 encoded and are defined with single quotes or double quotes. Use backticks to define a template literal, which allows you to create a multi-line string. Template literals also support variable interpolation using the dollar sign bracket syntax. Numbers can be integers or floating point types and are defined using a typical literal. A begin can store integers larger than typical number and is created by appending n to an integer literal. Boolean values are true or false, or lowercase. Define a symbol using the symbol constructor. Symbols are values that are guaranteed to be unique and are very useful as keys in objects or in context APIs. Null's intended use is for values that are expected to be empty, whereas you should use undefined to denote the complete absence of a value. For example, an out-of-bounds lookup on an array will return undefined. Objects are JavaScript equivalent of structs. Define an object using curly braces. Keys typically just strings, but you don't need quotes unless you're using disallowed characters. Access properties on an object using dot notation or square bracket notation. Objects can be nested inside objects. The built-in object object has a host of useful operations you can apply to other objects, including getting just the keys or just the values. Objects have a shorthand destructuring syntax to allow easy assignments. Arrays are collections that can store any data type. They grow and shrink as necessary. Access the items within using square bracket index notation. Indices start at zero. Use the length property to get the current length of the array. JavaScript arrays also have many useful methods for functional style programming, such as map, filter, reduce, every, and sum. Like objects, arrays can be destructured. JavaScript supports all the operators you'd expect. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are all fairly standard. Since JavaScript uses the number type for both integers and floats, division is always floating point division. Use star star to raise to a power. Suffix any of the operations with an equal sign to operate and assign simultaneously. Use plus plus or minus minus to increment and decrement numbers. Comparison in JavaScript JavaScript is fairly normal, apart from equality comparison. JavaScript has two equality operators, double and triple equals. Double equals will return true if the values are similar. It will try to convert one value to the type of the other and return true if the values were equal after the operation. There are some pretty strange rules around what gets converted to what though, so I recommend not using this operator if you can help it. Triple equals won't perform this conversion and will check equality strictly. JavaScript will throw an error if you try and access a property on null or undefined values. Use a single question mark during property access to return undefined early if the object whose property you're accessing may not exist. The double question mark is the nullish coalescing operator. If the value that comes before the operator is null or undefined, the expression will return the second value. This also has an assignment equivalent. Use if, else if, and else to conditionally execute code blocks. Conditions are placed in parentheses. JavaScript has the concept of truthy values, and conditions will respect this. Objects and arrays are truthy, even if they're empty. Create a for loop using C-like syntax to iterate and automatically apply an operation to a variable. Alternatively, use a for of loop to iterate over an iterable, like an array. If you want to iterate over the keys of an object, use a for in loop. Use a while loop to iterate until a condition is truthy. Break out of a loop with break or skip an iteration with continue. JavaScript also has a switch statement you can use instead of lots of if else statements. Just remember to break after each clause. The default keyword is used to define the default case of the switch. Define a function using the function keyword followed by the function name and then parameters and parentheses. Add default values to parameters using the equal sign. Use the return keyword to return a value from your function. JavaScript functions can only return a single value, but you can return an object if there are multiple things you need to return. To create a method on an object, define a function within the object's body, foregoing the function keyword. Use the get and set keywords to define custom getters and setters for object properties. You can define anonymous functions using the arrow function syntax shown here. These are great for using as higher order functions that get passed as parameters. You can also assign these to a variable as an alternative syntax for defining functions. However, I'm going to annoy half the JavaScript 
community and say that this is an anti-pattern. There's not a lot of point creating an anonymous function if you're then going to name it. The exception is closures, as you can only use the function keyword at the top level of a module. Since JavaScript is dynamically typed, it can sometimes be difficult to make sure you're returning the right thing from a function. This is where TypeScript comes in. I'll be doing an impatient devs video for TypeScript in the future, aimed specifically at JS devs. Get subscribed so you don't miss it. JavaScript also has classes. Unlike other languages, classes are effectively just blueprints for objects. Define a class using a class keyword and add a constructor by adding a function named constructor. Access the class's properties by using the this keyword within a method. Once you've defined a class, use the new keyword to create an instance of the class using its constructor. You can inherit methods from other classes using the extends keyword in your class declaration. Use super to call the constructor of a parent class. JavaScript has first class support for JSON, which makes sense given what JSON stands for. Use JSON to stringify to marshal a JavaScript value to JSON or use JSON.pass to turn a JSON string into a JavaScript value. Printing output in JavaScript is as simple as using the built-in console.log function with the value you'd like to print. You can also use other reporting levels like console.debug, trace, warn, and error. These will format output differently in some consoles, including the browser. Error handling in JavaScript uses exceptions and try-catch blocks. Use throw to raise an exception. You can technically throw any value, but typically you should use the built-in error class or a custom subclass. Use try to create an error boundary and handle errors gracefully with catch. You can define code to run regardless of the output with finally. Another pattern seeing more and more adoption is the result pattern, where you return an object with data and error properties, one of which is always null, and checking the error when a function returns. Import external code using the import from syntax. There are other options, but this is the preferred way in modern JavaScript. JavaScript modules are just objects, so you can destructure them in the import statement to access functions they export. Create a module, use the export keyword to make functions or values accessible to other files. Use export default to provide a default export, which doesn't need destructuring on import. Asynchronous JavaScript uses the concept of promises, which are values that will resolve to a future value at some point in time. Define an asynchronous function using the async keyword. This will return a promise. You can wait for a promise to complete using the await keyword. You can only await in async functions or at the top level of modules. The built-in promise object has some useful helpers like promise.all, which will allow you to wait on an iterable of promises and return an array of their results. JavaScript powers almost all modern web front ends, and it's a really important language to understand for full-stack developers. However, some people prefer to handle all their logic on the back end, which is something that's enabled by the HTMX library. You might enjoy learning that quickly by clicking here.